Hello and welcome back once again to the CRE podcast, a Christian resource exhibition. If you haven't been yet, sign up, come and say hello. I want to meet you and you are so very, very welcome. Yep, the one-stop shop for the church and Christian resources. It is the place to be and it's fantastic. Now, I have to be on my best behavior today uh, because we've actually got the owner and organizer here with me as a very special treat, Steve Goddard. Steve, thank you so much for joining me. It's an indeed a great pleasure. So um, I say behave myself, but suddenly I think maybe I should be in charge of you behaving yourself and, 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 and staying, up, staying on topic because we often have these great conversations as we were before this podcast. Well, and we wander off into the <laughs> stratosphere. Um, but that's the fun of it, isn't it? It really is. So, so many questions I want to ask you. We've had already had some of the great exhibitors on this podcast already. We've got some more coming up. Um, can you just tell uh, tell me a little bit more about your background with CRE. How did you get to be with CRE in the first well, place? Well, I was an exhibitor at the very first exhibition. And what was that? Um, and that was in 1985. And I was editor of Buzz magazine, which was uh, the leading Christian monthly at the time. Um, we were selling about 30,000 copies a month. And uh, along comes this character and says, I'm going to run a Christian exhibition. I'm going to advertise it in all the magazines and all the papers. So I was sort of who is he and who does he think he is? Because uh, w w why do we need a Christian exhibition? Um, but the those that, that ran the magazine, the publishing director said, let's take a stand. Um, we'll, we'll give it a go. So I turned up at the first show in uh, Victoria and um, in London and in the horticultural halls. And I thought everybody would have heard of Buzz magazine. There was no point in exhibiting. I mean, everybody knew us, didn't they? And so we, we set the stand up. And to my surprise, at least half the people who came past the stand had never heard of us. And that taught me a lesson. Humbling. Very humbling. Mm. And I thought, this is a really interesting idea. Um, it, it was well run. It was professional. It was a trade show for churches, which had never been done before. And so I got kind of hooked on it. I thought, this is a quality approach to, to the whole way that we do church. And that appealed to me. Wonderful. So you went as an exhibitor. And how long, how many years did you go, go along um, that for? Two or three years. I then went into freelance public relations. Yeah. And so I set my own business up. And by chance, uh, or by some other uh, reason, um, I was contracted in to help uh, a gentleman do the PR for the exhibition, got to know the exhibition organiser, and the rest really is history because within a year, I'd got some front pages of the Times and the independent newspaper. I'd got stories about the exhibition into the papers, and suddenly I was a hired hand. So you have seen the heart of CRE, like from the start, and you've gone along this journey, you've probably met so many new people, made so many friends. So I can see how that journey has has happened. Um, but now you manage the whole thing. How, how did that come about? I more than manage it, we own it. Well, I know. My I know. wife and I own the well, thing. And that was a surprise. Well, I could say I could say own it, but I'm guessing that something like this would take an awful lot of managing. It does and, take. And well, I've got some great people I'm working I with. I mean, do you course. have many do you have much time to sit back and go, yeah, I own CRE, I could just sit back and relax. Never. No. <laughs> Not for one moment. Um, but it's enormous fun. And uh what I like about it is uh, there's another side to this, and this this is the fact. There was a book that came out in the 70s called Addicted to Mediocrity. And it was by Frankie Schaefer. And basically he was saying that the church's greatest problem is it is addicted to mediocrity. We put up with things that are done badly. And mm. that really went in into to me very, you know, personally. And when I went to the exhibition for that first time, I thought to myself, this is answering that. There are people here who are trying to do church better. And that excited me because in one sense, I'd grown up in a church where there was that basic attitude, you know, jumble sale type mentality. You know, the idea of trestle tables everywhere, nothing really done well. Um, and so I got excited because I could see all these people bringing expertise 
uh, ideas, new resources into church life. And so I got excited about it then. Uh, and the journey then, of course, to become becoming the owner of, of the ex- exhibition with my wife was unexpected, but enjoyable. So what do you, how do you feel now, now owning CRE and all of the work that goes with it, how do you feel towards it compared to how you felt towards it when you were, say, exhibiting, for example? I think I feel the same way. Uh, I mean, I, I still see that that aim of pursuing excellence as being the central focus of what we're doing. Um, whether that be in areas as simple as getting the dry rot sorted in church once and for all, putting a decent sound system in that, mm. th- th- that people can really hear the sermon this time, you know, uh, making sure that the heating is is eco-friendly, making sure the roof doesn't leak, bringing in new ideas for youth work. I mean, that still is there at the very basis of, of the whole exhibition. I think it's really interesting that... Um, I think that when some people think of, say, a Christian event, they think it as quite a polite kind of place to go to. But I just love the vibe of CRE. I mean, it's very modern. It's very now. You've got like multiple stages scattered around amongst all the the exhibitors, lighting, all of that. What kind of experience do you want people to have when they go to CRE? I want them to be entirely surprised. Uh, and that's usually what happens because they might have been dragged along for the first ever uh, time they've gone. And in their mind, they have got a glorified jumble sale in in their heads. Um, and most of them walk out saying, I never expected to see that. I never didn't know there were people achieving that over there. Um, I didn't know I could find a resource that helped me with that in my church. Um, they go, go away and they eulogize about it and they evangelize for you to the, their churches. And then you often get the situation, if only we'd known. Why didn't anybody tell us about this? Oh, what? And you're not coming back again for two years. Yeah, and, and then you have to reinvent the wheel two years later. Um, uh, but, but that's what I want people to walk away with, inspired. Um, that they, There are innovations. Some stuff is being created by churches they're, they're in the vanguard of change, not just hooking on at the back end of change. They are bringing to bear a new things that have never been done before. Where would you say is Jesus in all of this? Well, what a big question. I mean, that's just a massive theological question as well as a well, practical no, no, I mean, one. I actually mean it's been more simple than that, you know, Steve. I mean, the thing is, is that you... It could have been anyone who took over CRE, who took on CRE, but it was you. And your your heart is so... It's one of the reasons why I love it is because when I see the passion between yourself and the team and Jenny and Brett and the rest, you know, it's you. it just feels so kingdom-centered. And so did you feel... Do you feel like God's presence, God's support... When when you go through the whole organising of these events, well, let's put it over. Let, let's put over the the actual buying of the show, which was not something I expected or ever set out to do. I was looking for somebody else to, you know, here am I, Lord, send him. You know, it was that sort of thing. So I went looking for somebody else to buy it when when the Bible Society who owned it owned it at the time, and um, in the end, the finger came round and pointed at me, <laughs> and and so. Eventually, I bought the exhibition, the assets, as it were. The, the Bible Society closed the, the exhibition down. Um, so I bought the exhibition. And so it was a massive, great leap of faith. I mean, if you say, where's Jesus in this? Well, put it this way. He caught me because I jumped and I, and I was scared stiff. But then the people came round to support me. Uh, the team formed. But I had to jump first. Ah, well, that, uh, and that, that was, there you go. That was the frightening yeah, thing. Yeah. If I had not jumped, that team would never have been created. Uh, the people I don't feel have come to me. And so the first step was mine in that respect. So yes, if Jesus is in it, he's there catching me. I love that. Do you know what I also think is great as well is that um, I think many people have that moment, but they never take that leap of faith and do it. You heard and you answered. But then suddenly, within you know a very short period of time, 
you were surrounded, you were supported. And I mean, here, us at Monkey Nut, we're just like, yeah, we love what you do. You know, we want to be shouting about you to, to everyone. But also what I'm thinking, um, what came into my head as well when you were answering it was that at every event, just seeing Jesus in every single exhibitor, it's just tremendous. Now, you have... Um, had some wonderful moments um, throughout the years, and uh, I mean, you have you have like rock six, rock stars turn up, and all of these wonderful things that happen. Has there been one or two wonderful moments that spring to mind for you? I think um, that my favourite moments are listening to people like Tony Campolo, um, Tony Campolo, who's the American uh, preacher uh, who. Uh, had a fundamental impact on me uh, when I was editing Buzz magazine. Uh, and to be able to bring Tony over from the States and to hear him speak at my event, is, is that's the most exciting thing because he's so fundamentally important to me. Um, there have also been a lot of um, the, the artistic side of things. It's enjoyable to bring in people who... Uh, you know, Paul Jones from Manfred Mann coming and opening the exhibition. Um, uh, uh, Sally, um, the the actress, Sally Phillips, yes, uh, opened the exhibition for us. Wonderful actress, and um, and to hear her speak of um, the fact that of her son who was who's Down syndrome, and the significance when we were looking at the church for all. Um, so we were looking at special and additional needs. Those things are exciting when you're not just talking um, about things that are exciting but are fulfilling and are, uh, you know, the whole counsel of God, as it were. Um, and, and also the fun stuff. I mean, we, we put up the world's first inflatable church. Let's just go there. Let's go. Let's go there. So come on. Come on. Uh, 40, when, where, how, what? Uh, 2003, Sandown Park, uh, 47 feet high, 47 feet wide had inflate, uh, entirely inflatable with inflatable pews and inflatable pulpit and an inflatable organ that didn't actually play, but it inflated. <laughs> and uh, we just couldn't resist the challenge of, of putting it up in, in Sandown Park uh, in the parade ring uh, where the crazy. horses parade around. How many could you fit in? Oh, you could fit 200 in quite comfortably. No. Oh, yeah, it was huge. Yeah, it was big enough. We got a proper minister, genuine <laughs> Anglican, to consecrate the thing. And uh, I got it onto the uh, uh, the front of six newspapers, national newspapers, the next morning. That's just great. Uh, as well as Sky News and all sorts of international things. So we've had some fun. Um, people say, well, what it was built as a nightclub. It, it, I mean, the church wasn't built for evangelistic purposes. It was built by somebody who said, oh, I could make a nightclub out of a church. So we kind of reclaimed it and we mm. brought it back in and said, right, why don't churches use this in the marketplace? You know, take it down to the town center, put it up there, because if people won't come to church, you take church to them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you know what I love? First of all, that story is brilliant, Steve. Um, but do you know what I love as well is the enjoyment that you get from people's success at CRE. Yep. And I remember when um, uh, when at the last CRE, a monkey nut was there and was doing nothing. And you come up and said, oh, so how's it going? I said, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to be working with that person and that person. And uh, you had pure joy in your face. And you had that for every single person there um, because it is so... Um, because it is so important for people to turn up um, who can supply and resource these churches to be there because um, it's amazing how much you can get out and how they can sell or supply and um, resource these churches. So, well, yeah, well, what we're saying is you can do only do certain amount on the internet. That is part of what we're all about. You cannot beat face-to-face. -face. Um, you cannot beat meeting the person behind the product. Um, that forms a relationship rather than merely a customer idea. Well, people buy people, right? Uh, exactly. I mm. mean, if I'm saying this to charities. Um, look, people don't buy um, projects. They buy, they, they support people. And the more that you as a charity can promote you, your people, they will back the people. Projects are another thing. So we're talking about eye-to-eye -eye contact. 
And that you can't get that really through via the internet. Yes, you can do Zooms and all that, but nothing beats that idea of face-to-face. And I think that's what, what our USP, particularly in an internet age. Um, and and the owner, the, the original founder of it, the exhibition, just loved business. You know, he, he was a, a, a Christian. He was in the PCC of his local church. He couldn't find the resources to do the job in the PCC. And he had been running model railway exhibitions and uh, secular shows. And his wife said to him, I think God's been preparing you. And you could see how he would go around the exhibition enjoying people talking to each other, seeing contacts made and seeing projects get off the ground because like-minded people uh, move together. So let's talk about your vision for CRE. So it's obviously growing. It's People get very excited when they talk about it, which must be a joy for you to hear. Where would you like to see CRE moving forward? Well, I think it's got potential to um, still develop with all the vertical sectors, if you like, of the show. What I mean by vertical sectors is in any area, whether it's church fabric, or whether it's um, the youth work, whether it is the ministry, the overseas charities, uh, in every area there is growth potential. Um, so I would love to see that those growing naturally um, uh, and developing within within the show. I also think it has got potential internationally. And I think that if um, the right organisation we, we could meet and partner with, um, because there really is nothing like it other than possibly in Sweden and certainly one was started in Korea, but certainly not in the States and largely in Europe, There isn't anything like it. There are conferences with exhibitions. This is what you have to understand is this is a standalone exhibition. This is not a big church conference with a little exhibition stuck at the back somewhere. The show is the star. And while we have a conference element to the show, we have talks, we have um, arts, we have, uh, you know, various activities. The main central focus is you're coming to an exhibition. And we want people to come and buy, not, not just spend a whole load of money. We're talking about purchasing ideas as well. So it's kind of, uh, and th- that where I think the growth is, that the unique aspect of a Christian exhibition could develop wider into international markets. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Because one thing that I've come to realize is that churches and church leaders, they're always looking for new things, new ways to do things. And it's all very well sitting around trying to get some ideas between yourselves. But where better to come up with these ideas, uh, to find new resources for youth, for junior church, Mm. for lighting, for chairs, you know, for how to um, tackle these specific subjects than CRE. Goodness, I saw a, um, a motorbike hearse Yep. You know, and I remember sitting there, I, I, I walked past it. I was like, that's really cool. And I thought to myself, of course, there are going to be people who love their bikes. They're going to be love going up. They lived on their bikes. What a wonderful thing to have available. You must be so proud. Very proud. And you've reminded me, I've been looking at, at the crucifix around your neck. Okay. And that reminds me of a product that was brought to the exhibition several years ago. A guy had in, there was a time when ministers were under pressure in their vicarages, that they were, they were getting attacked, particularly Catholic ministers on their own, priests, um, were, were the subject of a number of attacks, got into the media. And so this guy in Birmingham created an alarm hidden discreetly in a silver crucifix. Okay. The, the minister could wear around his neck and at a yank of the crucifix, it would send an alarm off. So, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Try yours. See where it's going now. Uh, no, no sorry. sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, talk about innovation. Um, yeah. I mean, the papers love that story. I mean, you can imagine, can't you? Yeah. It was a topical story. I sent out a questionnaire round to about 400 ministers saying, if you, um, if you were given the opportunity to wear a discreet alarm uh, hidden in a crucifix, would you consider wearing it? Two thirds said, yes, I had my story. And so out it went into the papers. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, okay, that's a kind of slightly wacky uh, side of thing. But I just do love innovation. Yes. Um, yes. And some of those things are, are very important, become very important. Um, we, we had a, 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 we, a, a standard one for us now, but we launched it for the first time it was ever seen was the digital hymnal. And if you haven't got an organist in your church and paying for an organist is an expensive business, here was a briefcase size unit with 3,000 hymns stored inside without a keyboard. All you had was a remote control. You just plug your um, machine into the speakers in the church. Uh, we will now sing hymn number 321, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Flick, flick, flick. You could play organ, piano, strings. You didn't need an organist, you know. So, <laughs> and the organ players just sit around the back of a bag of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> so you know um, they they've been exhibiting for years and years and years because it's a need that is fulfilling. It is fulfilling a need. Um, yeah. So it's exciting to see. I'm um, wondering if you could if you could add one. Random question, but if you could just have one little invention right now which you haven't seen at CRE, what would it be? Just a little oh, fun question. Hear me. I put it uh, to you because uh, I feel like I can throw these things to you. Because um, you've the reason why I'm saying is you've seen so much through the years. What haven't you seen yet? What haven't I seen yet? <laughs> oh no, you throw me one there. There you go. I know. But the thing is, if you're going to own something like CRE and throw a podcast, you're going to have to expect these things. I've actually thought of things that that I thought could could work. I mean, this is kind of okay. You you throw me one here, and it's difficult without having it physically in front of me. Yeah. But um, I saw uh, recently a um, advent calendar, which was wooden, and it had, and it was sort of all twenty four days. And you move this little character along, okay, to the end. I can't even remember what, what it was, what it was, but it was something like a duck or whatever. And I thought to myself, why don't they invent one with the, uh, Joseph and Mary and a, a, a pregnant Mary on a donkey moving along? You move one every day to the end and bang, there you are. You've got, rather than to, to have it, being uh, a totally non-religious thing. So I, I was tempted, I in fact have gone to an exhibit and said, why don't you market this, uh, this idea, get it made and sell it at the show because it'll go down a storm. I'm convinced it would be a great little thing that people would buy. So I just hold there a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so Steve, <laughs> Steve just made me a millionaire. It's great. Well, yeah, what a lovely idea. But the whole point of that question, right, yeah. is that, there is so much more yet to be discovered, Correct. yet to be done, and we need to evolve each year as well. And that's what you're doing at CRE, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it can be as as relatively minor as that, or it can be something that could change dynamic the whole nature of reaching, you know, teenagers. For, uh, you know, a completely new project that has impact. It could be, and everything in between. So. Tell me, um, before we wrap up here, tell me, Steve, in your own words, if people listen to this and they've never been to CRE before and they're going, wow, do you know what? I've heard about CRE? And, um, and yes, you should be there. But what would you say? Why should they come to CRE? I think because uh, if they care about the future uh, and the nurture of their church, their local church, then this is the only place to go. Um, a, but you do have to have a kind of sense of, of commitment to that. Because if you don't, if again, if you are addicted to mediocrity, if it doesn't really matter to you what the future is and you're fairly happy with things as they are, I don't think it's probably the place for you. Um, I think on the other hand, if you, you have a sense of adventure and a sense of mission and a, 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 a desire to th see things better, you must go to CRE. 
Steve Goddard, it's been such a pleasure uh, interviewing you today. And uh, I think it's going to be great that people can hear the heart, which I'm just seeing and hearing every time I speak to you. And uh, we've got some amazing guests coming up as well. And of course, they should be coming along. And the best place to find out the next one is creonline.co.uk. Absolutely. So come along. So Steve, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you for your time. So guys, be sure to check us out on the next CRE podcast. Uh, Do come along, tell your friends and uh, look up creonline.co.uk. Where is the next one? It could be really close to you. If not, what a great couple of days out and you'll have a great time. Do come along and say hello. We will be there. We want to meet you. We want to get to know you. You are so very, very welcome. So until then, God bless you and we'll see you soon. To find your next Christian resource exhibition, please visit creonline.co.uk. We'll see you there.